Last time, Ming General Liu Ting pressured the Koreans to have an official join him on his way south, while the Japanese have started to pull troops out of Korea. I'm Stefan, and this is Japan at War. Ming Admiral Chen Lin made his way to Kagumdo and merged his forces with Korean Supreme Naval Commander Yi Sun Sin on August 17th. This merging of forces had many in the Korean government on edge. Admiral Chen Lin had left those in the government with a bad impression. On top of that, General Liu Ting apparently had also told those in the Korean court that the admiral was a poor strategist and not much of a leader either. Hearing this made the Koreans concerned that the Ming admiral might actually hinder Yi Sun Sin's effectiveness. Yi Sun Sin had, of course, been warned about these concerns. So he prepared a feast and even met with Chin Lin's fleet on the open water and personally escorted him to his port. Chin Lin is said to have been very happy at being treated so respectfully. He and his men ate, got drunk that night, and both the Joseon and Ming troops had quite warm feelings with each other at this time. Two days later, it was reported that over 100 Japanese ships were scouting west and getting closer to their own port. Both Yi Sun Sin and Chen Lin set sail to intercept those ships. The report wasn't true. Only two ships were spotted and both got away. After that, a number of Korean and Ming ships were left there to attack any Japanese ships that appeared. A few actually did, with the Koreans doing all the fighting. The Ming said that unfavorable winds prevented them from being able to engage the Japanese ships. Chen Lin was actually having a drink with Yi Sun Sin when this was reported to him. The Ming admiral was incredibly embarrassed by this and flew into a fit, even breaking the cup that he had been drinking from. Yi Sun Sin calmed the admiral down by promising that he would share the number of heads taken with him. After all, he had come all this way from China to help the Korean people. This allowed Chen Lin to send a favorable report to Beijing. In Yi Sun Sin's official report, he did as he had promised and gave credit to the Ming having taken most of the heads. However, Yi sent an unofficial report as well saying that the Koreans had done all the fighting and the Ming were basically taking credit for it. And this confirmed what King Sanjo had thought about the Ming admiral. Now, eventually, rumors of the unofficial report started to circulate, and a Ming official touring the South eventually made demands to see this report. Only the official report was presented. In early September, Toyotomi Hideyoshi in his Fushimi castle was still worrying for his son Hideyori, fearing that he wouldn't last long as he sent a letter to Mori Teramoto, Usugi Kagakats, Maeda Toshie, Ukita Hidei, and Tokugawa Ias, the five regions responsible for protecting Toyotomi's rule. The letter read, Until Hideyori becomes an adult, I ask that all that are named in this document help me. I beg of you five concerning Hideyori. The details of this document have been conveyed to the five men who are ranked under the five addressed in this letter. I hate to end it here, but I must. Just as they had done numerous times before, they swore their loyalty to Hideyori. This did little to ease his concerns, though. It does make you wonder if he perhaps felt a little guilty considering that he had also sworn to serve the heir of Oda Nobunaga, and obviously hadn't done so. It's also probable that he knew that once he was gone, there was no real reason for his daimyo to not do as he had done and take power for themselves. As he lay in his bed close to death, he summoned the strength to compose this death poem. My life came like dew, disappears like dew. All of Naniwa is a dream after dream. On September 18, 1598, Toyotomi Hideyoshi dies at 62 years of age. One of the last commands that he would make was to have all the men return to Japan. The war was done. Regardless of what you may feel about Hideyoshi, it cannot be denied that he led an incredible life. 
literally rising from a peasant to de facto ruler of all Japan. And while Oda Nobunaga would be considered the first of the three great unifiers, it was Toyotomi Hideyoshi that would have all the provinces of Japan fall under his rule. I'll see you next time.